EXO's Dio leaving SM Entertainment, an update on NCT Taya's health, but what on earth is actually going on with 5050 right now? Blackpink, Jennie's questionable merch, Ivy Isla being bombarded for autographs at school, and so much more in today's episode of Totally Legit K-pop News with me, Angelina. I put my glasses on today since a lot of you told me I needed them after I said Ikyori looked like Taylor Swift. Hmm, it still looks like Miss Taylor, I don't know what to tell you. Let's start off with some news from SM Entertainment. We have recently found out that EXO's Dio has left SM Entertainment, actually, as it's been reported that he's joining an agency that his manager created. Now it seems that this manager has been with him since debut, so he'll be able to focus on all of his activities. But what about EXO? Here's what SM has to say in response to these reports. In response to the report, SM Entertainment officially announced, Dio's exclusive contract with us will expire in early November. Following thorough discussions with Dio, it has been decided that he will continue his EXO activities with SM, but will proceed with his acting and individual activities through the newly established agency founded by his and SM's former manager. So there we have it. Of course, we've discussed previously in the past how, you know, members of Girls' Generation can leave SM Entertainment and still be part of Girls' Generation. You know, the finality of groups are not so final anymore. In a positive way, every time I say that, it sounds like I'm being like, groups need to be more final it's like they just keep dragging it on like no no as someone who's been through a lot of disbandments i don't mean it like that it's a good well if, it's a good thing if that's what the idol wants you know i have no doubt sometimes idols are just like i just want to leave i want to leave can i just leave and their companies are like yes but <laughs> you gotta come back of course let me know what you think in the comments below but of course, moving on to some more SM news, we have Ted of NCT, of course, who we've previously covered on this channel, his motorcycle accident that he fractured his thigh, and then more recently, the absolute outrage that people had because SM accidentally seemingly uploaded a photo of his injury through a teaser pic. They essentially forgot to crop out the injury. So people were saying, of course, that SM was forcing him to work even though he wasn't ready, especially since SM never really released any update to the situation until now, as we've just gotten an update on his health. So here's what SM Entertainment had to say. Hello, we would like to inform you about NCT Tae's health status and future schedule. Tae, who got into a motorcycle accident last August, underwent surgery successfully and is recovering his health by focusing on treatment with the will to greet his fans as soon as possible. However, as he still needs sufficient treatment and stability, Tae will not be able to participate in NCT 127's third tour, Neo City The Unity, scheduled for November. We ask for fans' generous understanding. We would like to express our deepest gratitude to fans who are concerned about Tae's health, and we will do our best to ensure that Tae can greet fans again in good health. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> now, I'm not saying, like, I'm, of course, don't do the concert. That's perfectly fine. A lot of fans are going to understand that, right? You know, between a photo shoot and a concert, it's quite different, isn't it? I'm just surprised they're not forcing him to sit on a chair in the corner and sing anyway. <laughs> But of course, let me know your thoughts. If you were wondering what in the actual world is going on with 5050 right now, you're not the only one. There's been so much back and forth going on because of course 5050 have a lawsuit against their company, so there's a lot of he said, she said, and even dispatch said. But most recently we've had the members in a separate Instagram account alleging a lot of new things. Now there's a lot of allegations being made and this Twitter account has been translating all of it. So I'm going to link this below just as I link every single source. So if you're interested in reading the post, I'll link this as well. However, following this, there were some really fishy reports going around that didn't really make the most sense. I saw an article that 5050 dropped their lawsuit and returned to attract. And then, well, actually, no, just one member dropped her lawsuit, but actually she only dropped it because she's finding new legal counsel, but she's still going to fight it, but which is new legal counsel. But then, no, actually, she just dropped the lawsuit and she's actually returning to attract. And then this and then that, and there's just so much going around. However, it has finally been reported that member Kina has withdrawn her lawsuit and will effectively be returning to the company. So why the sudden change of heart? I'm not too sure, but let's read into it. 5050's Kina cancels appeal to suspend exclusive contract and returns to Attract. So on October 17th, the source from Attract shared, Kina met with CEO Jeon Hong Joon yesterday. Kina will be taking the time to self-reflect for the time being, and then we will gradually talk about our future course of action. With the CEO sharing the following, Kina was really worn out. She must have had a difficult time. She said that she was sorry and that she apologizes while crying. I'm grateful she picked up the courage 
encouraged to return even if late. This of course comes after a court denied their request to suspend their exclusive contracts with the company to which they were planning on appealing, right? Now in terms of plans of their future activities, it seems the CEO has also revealed the following. Right now we are not at the stage where we can discuss their future activities. Right now her priority is to take some time to self-reflect. Kina also understands this and she knows what mistakes she's made. Both Attract and I will accept Kina back into our arms. She asked to rest for a day or two, then we will resume conversations. Here's what some Canadians had to say about this situation. Kina is the only member that I remember. You did well. I know it was difficult to return alone, so be good from here on out. It's good that Attract accepted her since as long as they have one of the original members, 5050's name can live on. It's good you've returned. Let's pick a new vocalist, re-record Cupid, and start promoting overseas. If the CEO forgave her, so should we. She is young and impressionable. Since she apologized, it's up to the parties involved. Wow, the CEO is as forgiving as Buddha. I'm sure it took a lot of courage to escape on your own. You did well. I hope the CEO gained strength. She was the only member missing from 5050's previous statement. She made the right choice. So what do you think of this? Do you think she made the right choice? Do you think this looks bad that she is, you know, changing her mind about this? Because from a K-netism point of view, from what I'm seeing, of course, just these couple of comments, it seems that it's admirable that she is, you know, putting her pride aside, or I don't even know, just putting it aside to like go back and show some humility to her CEO that she wronged in the past. And it's so great of him to accept her back. Do you know what I mean? That's the scenario that it's painting out to be from what I'm seeing. But what do you guys think of the situation? Of course, it doesn't end here though. There's another article. CEO Jun Hong Jun reveals the real reason 5050's Kina returned to attract. I came to the office at 5 p.m. yesterday. It's been about five months since I last saw her. I don't know how to put it, but her state wasn't good. She's been suffering in the dark for four to five months. So I kept the talk brief. I told her, First, take some time for self-reflection. Secondly, you need to sincerely confess your wrongdoings. Third, you should be honest and recount everything that happened to the lawyers without omitting anything. We need to have a conversation about who said what lies to you and who manipulated you. She said all right, so we decided to talk more about a day or two. It seems the CEO is just revealing everything. She looked really worn out. It was tough, you know? So I asked Kina, what do you think went wrong with the giver CEO An Sung Il? She said the falsified academic records and the music copyright issue. So her share decreased from 6.5% to 0.5%. She said she had no knowledge of that. Because of that incident, she began to have doubts about him and started to realize that he wasn't an honest person. But 50-50 is a team, you know, a team of four. So all of them should drop the case together. But they weren't able to because they all had different thoughts. So Kina was the first to muster up the courage to leave. It was a hard decision for her. So again, what do you make of this situation? Because of course, as we mentioned in the beginning, there are a lot, still a lot of allegations coming out from the rest of the 5050 members against Attract. We still even have like a post from two hours ago that's been translated about more allegations or explaining more of the situation from their side. Now, of course, this is an ongoing situation. I have no doubt there's going to be even more back and forth. And with Kina returning to Attract, how does that affect the lawsuit? Let me know your thoughts. Picture this. You're a member of one of the biggest girl groups promoting in recent times. Adored by fans all over the world, promoting in different countries, on music shows, releasing hit after hit. But you still gotta go to school. Well, kinda. Iso of Ive, of course, is still in high school and she goes to Hanim Multi Art School, which is famous for celebrities. Now, why is this important? Well, a lot of fans are angry because there are videos going around of her seemingly having to sign a bunch of autographs for everybody while at school. This tweet has gained 14.1 million views in it. We can see her signing a notebook. <laughs> Like we could see she's signing multiple pages of a notebook. Some people are saying they forced her to stand and wouldn't let her sit down so she could sign every single individual page of this notebook. But this is only a 10 second clip. A student recounted, even though she's promoting, she came to school and though she napped a little during classes, she signed autographs for each and every one. She's such an angel. Now this tweet in particular does make darker allegations, but we'll get into that shortly. Because the main argument of this whole thing is that, you know, she should be able to go to 
to school to learn you know they should really make school a more conducive place to her learning this is for her education she shouldn't be going there to be an entertainer essentially but funnily enough on that note i actually came across a promotional video that she made for the school while at school so she's in her school uniform basically like doing a promotional video for the school posted on the school's youtube channel hanim tv she's not the only one of course to have done this but i digress fans are just not happy with the situation that students would be able to bombard her and ask her for her autograph and so they have started the hashtag starship protect isa and even made email templates to send to starship entertainment actually if you search up i've isa on twitter you're going to see next to her name however there is a darker element to this story that is ultimately unconfirmed because that tweet that had like 14 million views is essentially alleging that one of the students who was asking for an autograph was seemingly excited now i've watched the video i don't really see what anyone is talking about so that post is essentially saying that she needs to be protected from that but again i don't really see anything and if you go on twitter people are mostly just talking about her you know, being bombarded by the autograph. So I really don't know what to make of that. But let's discuss this a bit because I think it's really interesting. You know, from what I understand, the Hanlim Art School or art schools similar to it are famously attended by idols because of their ability to accommodate such busy schedules. I mean, there's no way these idols are attending these schools every day. Absolutely not. If that were the case, they would not be able to promote. There's no way. How are you gonna go to different countries, do concerts, film music videos, do all day filming, if you're gonna have to stop for hours a day to go to school, it's impossible. There's no way these idols are attending school every day. And you know, there's a lot of conversations, a lot of people saying that, you know, idols, if anything, will attend school like three times a year year if that they'll go for exams they'll go once in a while but it's not an everyday thing so the argument that you know she's going to school to learn i mean she's probably going to school to take an exam or just to show up to say that she showed up from what i understand because if you are an actively promoting idol there's just no way there's no way you're doing schoolwork at home you're fitting it in where you can but there's two interesting points of views here right there are people saying like she's literally being bullied this is this is horrible treatment of her while others think that it's just it's just the thing that happens you're a celebrity going to school every once in a blue moon and you're being nice enough to sign all these autographs for your peers of course this has happened to other idols as well that saying that it's anything other than it is basically just coddling idols a little too much since equating signing autographs to being is a little much but of course let me know what you think do you think it's a completely inappropriate thing to ask of her or do you think you know she just signed some autographs and that was that let me know in the comments below Blackpink's Jenny recently released her digital single, You and Me, which has been a huge hit worldwide. All I'm saying is it's breaking this record, it's doing this, it's charting here, it's charting there. But naturally, alongside a hit song, you have to have some merch, right? And previously, we discussed how the creator of Sailor Moon actually designed the album art cover. Well, now we have some merch featuring that art cover. And people think it's ugly not the art the art's beautiful right but people are just accusing that the merch itself was done so lazily so we have to check it out of course <sighs> yeah the reason my heart skips jumps so of course here we have the album art has like this long hair in front of a moon very sailor moon coded of course because naoko takichi did this for her however let's take a look at this so at YG Select released these photos. So we have a cushion. I mean, it fits the very square nature of the design, right? <gasps> no, there's no way. You're literally kidding. How they couldn't have like extended the image a little bit. Like <sighs> on the, one of the responses on Twitter, it's like, you're not going to see heaven. I assure you that YG official. It's so, this is literally so lazy, you know? <laughs> My mom actually, like, made me an ATs blanket once, and she didn't know what she was doing, and, like, it ended up be being really weird. I'll show you later. It kind of reminds me of that, like, some boomer going on the... I'm sorry, I did not just call my mom a boomer. Someone who's not a designer going on to some random site and uploading a photo that is not fit to be on a specific... Do you know what I mean? Like, you get where I'm going, right? Like, why is it so square? Like, I get that's the design, but they could have done it in a different way. Maybe a collage or something. They could have added something to... There's no way. 
There's no way. This is so bad. This is horrible. I have to admit. Mm. <laughs> There's, and it's like sixty-five dollars. I'm pretty sure. If we do sixty-five thousand Korean won to CAD or USD, so forty-eight US dollars, which is probably like a hundred Canadian dollars. You know damn well they could have done. It's like okay, I get you might not want to mess with the art, right? Like it is what it is, and they probably did it. Like couldn't afford to commission her to change it i don't know like i get not wanting to mess with it but like i said you could have done a collage you could have done literally anything else literally anything else than a square on a phone that <sighs> okay <laughs> a black a black phone case at least there's options right but that's not it i mean not all of the merch is ugly but a lot of people the phone case definitely was the main culprit in this imagine working with the sailor moon creator and this is what you come up with yg is going to jail oh to hell i was gonna say maybe though <laughs> like actually is this a joke we waited so long for her and you give us effortless merch with those prices this is so unfair totally disappointed please fix it jenny deserves better can y'all not sell this out else yg won't take us seriously we need more than them slapping the cover on stuff and calling it a day now again like not all the merch is ugly as hell okay 104 dollars. like people are saying it's too expensive but I'm trying to create merch as well, and it's just expensive. Like, shit is expensive these days. Mind you, I'm trying to make something embroidered, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, like, this is cute. Like, you have the you and me. It, why is it blurry as hell? What's wrong with weavers? I can't even zoom out. I give up. Anyways, here's what some K netizens have to say. Seriously, they make me not want to buy them. What is this? You can't tell me this is the best they did with the cases. The goods show no sincerity, and the prices? Who will buy them? I don't see a single ounce of sincerity in this. They really couldn't use Sailor Moon in any other way than this? Ah, uh, the sincerity. Wow, wow, those cases are 65,000 won. Wow, but this is really insincere. Honestly, you could go on Casetify and just upload that picture yourself, probably. And you could have a... I don't have a case. I was going to you could have a like a hardcore case. I don't know why I'm going hard for a case if I, I don't even have a case from them. I have a, a Spigen case. Just a little stump on world touches. Let's move on to a little segment I like to call K-pop shenanigans, which are basically fun little things that have happened in K-pop recently. And one fun little announcement is that Red Velvet have announced their comeback. So of course, a couple months back, we had a little scare that people thought Red Velvet were disbanding because there was rumors that Irene wasn't renewing her contract with SM Entertainment. But here we have a comeback confirmation with what a chill kill. Then we have Sunmi who released her music video for Stranger. Young Posse made their debut with Macaroni Cheese. Have you ever wondered why Epic High never had a light stick? Well, it seems that they gave this idea to YG and uh, that's why it never happened. One small step for light sticks, one giant leap for K-pop. So this, <laughs> this is what Epic High wanted as a light stick. It's not even offensive because it's so cute. Yeah, what then we have Usung in the comments basically saying, I'll trade the rose light stick for Epic Highs. Please consider my genuine offer. But in terms of real light sticks, BB Girls, previously Brave Girls, of course, have revealed their new light stick. Oh. Is that not a temporary one? Okay. I don't know. Swan of Purple Kiss is going viral because of her response to someone calling her ugly. So let's check it out. You're so ugly. You too. Maybe you're the more. Don't say the bad words to me. I want to talk with furries only. Not you. Not you. I've seen this going around. So someone calls her ugly and she's like, uh... Look who's talking. Now let's talk about the K-pop song of the day, which is My Name's Message. You got a message? So this came out in 2013. So this song talks about sending someone a message, a heartfelt, sincere message that you hope they will reciprocate. And also kind of asking them like, why aren't you responding? It's kind of similar to Girls' Generation's beep beep in terms of the message. But honestly, it's so magical. 
You know what? This is actually my text tone on my ice cream phone. Because you know, Big Bang promoted the ice cream phone and the lollipop phone. And the lollipop phone was newer, but I just, I liked the pastel nature of the ice cream phone. So I got that. So I literally cut the song and it was kind of abrupt. It didn't like fit super well as a text tone, but it was like, you got a message. <laughs> fun times the phone was cheap as hell you could do fun things like that but you could literally spell anything on the led screen on the top of the phone now you can't even do custom text tones or ringtones on the iphone and i think that's silly as hell me mama shang and mr g just ring a ding ring a ding ring a ding dong anyways i recommend you listen to this song i love it and let's move on to some tiktoks Ooh. Just ring a ding, ring a ding, ring a dong dong. Okay, so there's this creator, my woo boo, who did like these AI covers, and I need to shout them out because holy crap, Barbie World by Mingi. Con calma by Hong Joon. Love Story by Yuno? God is Alone by Jongo? We need to ask this creator wholeheartedly, sincerely, to do Jongo covering In Heaven by JYJ. Like, the, I need the whole... <laughs> I just need to hear it. So beautiful. I was like shocked so of course every single tiktok will be linked below go check them out me and the girls after we get drafted into the military oh 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 tell me what you want tell me what you need Ooh, dj put it back on young me when i opened presents and it was clothes instead of toys God. Okay, Kiho's opinions on birds. Listen. Watch yourself. <laughs> Opinion on birds, they need to mind their business. Um, they're just everywhere, especially pigeons. Okay. Don't okay. Like Fair enough. How do you come from parrots though? Mm. Kiyobi, when people start asking me who that gorgeous man with the long black hair and has a deep voice is in the Mnet Paris performance. <laughs> I love that meme so much. Super shy, super shy, but wait a minute while I make you mine, make you mine. To lean and take them on you. <laughs> I want to go out with you. Where you want to go? Her little arm thing that she does. She does that a lot. Oh, she does this, right? But like it fits the actual choreography. Oh, fuck. I wasn't even filming. I wasn't even recording. <gasps> I'm so okay that is basically it for this video thank you so much for joining me these are the lovely individuals who help support my channel on a monthly basis and actually you can apparently join my patreon for free i think this is a new thing like you join for free and you can see the free posts i just didn't think that was an op that wasn't an literally wasn't an option before patreon didn't tell me i mean it's fine i have like free wallpapers and stuff that you guys can download and stuff like aspha wallpapers new jeans wallpapers and all that jazz if you're interested you can literally join for free as for me i'm gonna get going so i'll see you guys next time bye i'm super shy super shy but wait a minute while i make you mine make you mine do you guys like just never answer phone calls i, I get phone calls sometimes not my circus i'm sorry i'm teeny for you boy so let it let it be. do you guys remember that dream high cover <laughs> so beautiful okay bye